most of the Vati community are making the same four mistakes and it's killing their voice AI agents. In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact four level system that will help you fix any error that you might encounter when creating tools in Vapi. Okay, so what is the secret sauce to make tools work in Vapi? We need four things. We need the tool, we need the prompt, and we need the webhook, and then we need the response. So TPWR. Yeah, so we need these four things. Each one of these requires a specialized piece of knowledge to actually make it all work together. So I'm about to go through the four levels from noob level to casual to pro to Chad. And if you follow these steps, you'll be able to troubleshoot everything in your VAPI assistant, especially when you're making tool calls. So as a noob, I would expect you to be able to create the tool in your in the VAPI UI and you will follow these conventions like so. So you'll have the name of the tool, which say check calendar. The tool name is short, bespoke, and concise. And the description tells the agent when to use this tool or what the tool is for. You know, along the lines of use this tool to extract the specific information from my prompt, from my call. That's not going to work. This is not what the description is for. This literally tells your AI agent when or when to use it or what it's for. Right, then next up comes the parameters in the tool. In the parameters, in the you'll have properties. Each property will have a name and its description. The name follows the same convention as before, so using camera writing, and I usually name it depending on what it's for. So for example, here, I want to extract the request at the times, and the property description should also be short and concise. And in here, you can actually tell it what action to take. In this case, I'm extracting the requested time of the user in this specific format. And this is then extracted from the live call. It then grabs the time and then sends it over to a webhook or API endpoint when it's done. Next up, we have this thing called a silent tool call. I think these are super good, especially if your tool calls are less than one and a half seconds. So a tool call, by the way, is when your AI agent decides to use one of these tools. Most of the time I pick none because most of the setups that I have are completely deterministic or code based. So the responses are really quick. I don't use any AI 99% of the time in my tool calls. So how do you now set that up in VAPI? So this is how it's going to look like. You'll click on create tool, custom tool. You'll give it a name, the description, also very short. Do not do do not do something like this. I've seen people do this where they put in like a whole book in here. That is not going to work. Next up, we want to choose the parameters. So you click on add, add property. You'll put in the requested time, the description, and then the required. And this is what I meant by custom tool call. So in here, you'll have messages will be set to none here if you would like it to be silent. So silent just means it will stop saying things like, wait a sec, hold on a sec, give me a sec, because it uh, that's like the default VAPI things. So that's how you get rid of those. You'll click on save and that is the noob level stuff. What a casual can do is enable the tools in our assistant UI. So let's go back to VAPI. I'm just going to show you that real quick. We'll go back to assistants and in one of our, in one of our assistants, you can now see the tools section and then actually pick the tool that we just created like so, and then publish your assistant so it saves. And that is that first step in being a casual. So, and next up to create a webhook, set it up properly in an A10. So, you, and you'll grab the production URL from it, not the test one. You'll be able to copy the production URL into your server URL of that tool. Uh, you'll paste it in, you'll turn on your scenario, and you will do a quick call to test the tool. Okay, so I'm actually going to do all that right now. However, if you guys notice, I didn't before set up my server URL, and this is what we're gonna do right now. So you can go right below, download this template for something that looks exactly like this, and then here you'll find two examples. We'll have the basic and the chat example. So in here, we need to have the webhook set up like this. You'll have the this chosen to production. You'll copy this, so URL copy it at the bottom and you'll have using response to webhook node set like so. Now we go back to VAPI, we paste this in, save it, go back to our assistant, 
we'll give it a really quick call just to make sure that this works. to Claire's Med Spa. Are you looking to refresh, rejuvenate, or treat yourself to something special today? Yeah, can you just use the check availability tool, please? I checked the calendar for you. For today, we have openings at 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. You... Okay, so do you guys see, see how she responded with 2 and 3 p.m.? I'll show you why, because when we go into this webhook right here, we copy to editor and we pin this, what actually has happened is within this response, I've told it that the available slots are 2 and 3 p.m. And, and we'll go into little detail now on how to make this work. The next step for a pro. Webhook settings are set up exactly how I just showed you guys. So, you know, we've got the production URL. We've set the post. Respond to webhook node is set. Then we have the webhook response node set up. And this is the biggest thing that people do not do. They don't put it in the response in the format that VAPI expects. And to send information back to VAPI, we need to have it in this specific JSON format. We need to have the tool call ID. And this is what VAPI sends over when it sends over a tool call. So you have a unique identifier for that specific thing. And your response has to be in a single line string or another word is it has to be in specific JSON format. And the next step would be then to map these results from your webhook to in here so that it comes through properly. Optionally, you can set these up here with my little yellow arrows. Right. So how does this look like in practice? So you click on execute workflow, and you're able to map the results from the, on the left hand side. You'll see you got webhook. Uh, we can click on this to unexpand the headers. And somewhere in here, you'll find tool calls, like, like so. And we need the ID. This is the most important thing to make this work. So in here, what you would do then is grab this, drag and drop. And now you have the tool call ID go back to VAPI. And in here, this is the response that VAPI will read. So we have this word results and anything you put in these quotation marks, this is what VAPI will read. Now, what I was talking about is if you now have a new line in here, like so, so I just press enter. If this now won't work because it is a new line, it is now in not in JSON format. So chat level is this scenario here and I'll show you guys how that one works right now. So let's jump back to our document right here. We, as a Chad, we now, are able to understand that VAPI now has specific requirements for response. We are now able to turn it into a JSON string. We can now put in, in the result, not just one sentence or like one object, but we can actually put multiple different things to a VAPI. So for example, in one of my projects, I needed to give back the website URL, but not to actually say the URL. So I told it, it structures to not say the URL, but it also provided the answer from the knowledge base. So it did three things. So that just in case the person wanted extra information about the document, I could actually send them the SMS with a URL. And that's what the VAPI agent will remember and then send that through to the user. So that was my specific use case. But I think the thing that you can take out from this is that I, in every single one of these cases, I grab my variable, whatever that is, and convert it into a JSON string. You can also use this thing called json.stringify in your NA10 to convert these. So I'm going to show you right now how that looks like. So we go back to our webhook response in our chat example right here. And um, if I just click inside of this, open that up, I have all the response code content type application. I click on this little button right here. And in here, I have a few things happening. So in here, for example, I have I have the answer and it's like this and notice I don't have quotation marks, but because I've converted it to JSON string, it actually put the quotation marks in there automatically. So what would happen is if you put these in, in here, like so, now you have double quotation marks and that's now not proper JSON format. So we need to get rid of them. Another way to do this would be to do this. So it'd be JSON dot stringer, and then we put in our 
and then we probably want to map them here. So that's like another way that you could do it. Thing. And the last thing to Chad level is we need to then input some things into our prompt. So you also, as a Chad, understand that out of the box, our AI agent doesn't have enough context to know what time it is. It only knows the time that it was trained on. So currently, how to fix that is we put in this liquid JS variable into our prompt and we can change the IANA time zone into here to wherever you are in the world. So for me, it could be Poland slash Warsaw. And in the prompt, we also give very brief or precise descriptions of our functions. Now, in here, I do like to give it little things like this. So it checks availabilities and use before booking. And then, or another way would be to give a booking flow or step-by-step -step instructions of how to actually book. You also, you guys also don't need to overcomplicate this part. I've seen, I've seen this stepped out and so probably like 15 steps, highly uh, not needed. This is as much as you really need to uh, get it to work. If this still doesn't work, it highly depends on your use case and the context of the business or the agent's job that it's doing. So now, now you've know the secret source, you know that to go from noob, casual pro to Chad. Um, hopefully you will now be able to troubleshoot your own results based on this because now you know a lot more information. So we provide one-on-one -on -one help and specific help exactly like this in our Voice AR Bootcamp. And if you want to join us in the Elite, you can also book a link with Kevin. You'll find the link to the calendar in the school community as well. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.